history, people have created with fiber, whether it's plant fiber or animal fiber. Today, we are going to be working with yarns, some wool, some cotton, and even some man-made acrylic fibers. We're going to create some really fantastic projects. They look complicated, but actually quite simple once you know the process. So let's get started. Here are the materials we'll use today. A variety of yarns in different colors, wool, cotton, acrylic blends. We'll use rope, cotton or nylon in different sizes. To decorate, we will use beads and pipe cleaners. We're also going to need cardboard, masking tape, scissors, of course. We'll use two different types of tapestry needles. And for the first project, we'll need some wire. This is the first project we'll be doing. It's a circle weaving. It's quite beautiful. I've used a variety of yarns and different colors here. And this one is even a little more interesting. You'll notice that I use some fuzzy little yarns in here of specialized materials. We're going to show you how to do this. It looks very complicated and it's really quite simple. So let's begin. We're now going to start with this wire. Make sure you have an overlap of an inch or so right here. And we're going to use some masking tape to hold it in place. The first thing most people want to do is just wrap it around like this and they get a big knot and that doesn't work. We want it to stay together because we're going to be putting stress on it as we weave. So you take the wire like this and overlap and you put the tape at an angle like this. That way when you wrap it you are making it very strong and you pull it this way and again this way. This way as you twist it in you get a really strong bond that you can't pull apart. You need to start with a yarn and you can choose any color you wish. I would suggest that you use a thinner yarn. This is an orange cotton yarn that I'm using and we're going to make spokes upon which we are going to weave. First thing you do is lay your yarn out and leave about two inches on each side and make a cut. That is going to give you extra room to tie on at the end. We're going to need nine of these so you can lay them out like this and cut. So we have our pieces of yarn ready to go. We'll start with one and we're going to tie it on like this. Make a knot like this. I usually use about four or five knots. We're going to now pull this across and the knot will be made a little differently. You'll see that I have a loop here and I'm going to pull it up really nice and tight like this. If the yarn is saggy, it makes it very difficult to work with. And again, I make three to five knots. I know that sounds like a lot, but anything less, they may pop open. There you go. And I'll trim the edge down about like that. No closer than that. I have added eight of the full strands of yarn and knotted them off. You'll see they're equally spaced. I'm going to move them down just a little bit and make room for my ninth one. These all have now overlapped in the center and when I add my ninth string I'm only going to use it part way because we want an uneven number for weaving. Right now we have 16 spokes so I'm going to add my ninth string right here and I'll again put several knots in it and then this is a very important step that you're going to be doing next. We are going to take this string and we're not going to go to the end, we're going to go to the middle. We're going to take all these overlap strings that we have here and I'm going to drop my string down through the middle like this and then I'm going to come back up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, then I'll go down another one and back up and I am pulling these strings all together in the center like this. I'll go down one more time and when I come up I'll make a loop which I will bring my string up through like this one more time down and one more loop like this. 
that brings all of the strands together into the center and then I can trim. I'm going to take this large piece of yarn that I have and I'm going to go to the very end and kind of wrap it around my fingers this way so it's easy to move in and around when I wrap it. And I'm going to begin the wrapping process. So I want to wrap the yarn around like this so that the wire is covered. I'm finishing up adding the yarn to the outer edges to make sure it's nice and covered. It gives it a really nice finished look. I'm going to take the yarn that I have left over and make a loop like this and drag the yarn through. I'll make one more loop like this and then I can cut the edges off. Now it's finished and we can begin weaving. I usually tell my students to choose the same color of yarn that I use for the spokes. That way with this little knot in the center, it all blends in to start with. So I'm going to take a length of yarn, oh, about 18 inches or so. You can go longer if you wish and cut it off. Let's take our yarn and we are going to thread our tapestry needle. If you try to do it like this, it's very hard to get the yarn straight through. So fold the yarn over your finger like this and take that fold and push it through much easier. I'm going to take this end and I'm going to just tie it on one of the loops in the center like this. And I'm just going to make one knot. That's all I need to hold it in place. I'm going to trim that edge off so it doesn't get caught up and then we'll begin. The weaving process begins over, under, over, under. This is called a weft. This is the spoke area that we're going to work with. And I'm going to take my needle, start anywhere, and I'm going to go under, over, under, over. And I'll pull the yarn through. Since I've come underneath, it's going to be over, under, over, and you just keep the process going. I've decided to use a variegated string for my next color. This is a cotton yarn and it has green and white blended together. And this is going to look great right next to the orange. So this is how I add my new color. There's two ways of doing it. You can tie this off and add a new one on, but I find the easiest way that works best for me is to simply tie the two yarns together. The knots that you get can then be tucked into the back of the piece so that it doesn't show. So I'm going to take this yarn and add to this piece like so. And I'm going to make about three knots here. We're going to trim the edges back a little bit so we don't have the strings out too much. And then we're going to start the process. Again, looping and adding the yarn. Don't make your edge too long, it will get caught up, so about like this. And we're going to continue the weaving, just where we were before. You can see that our weaving has progressed a great deal. I have used the green and white, I added a beautiful blue, and now I've added lime green. I want you to notice something here. What I did here, you can also do. I used a double strand. So I took two strands of yarn through here and this gives it a really thick, lush look. And we'll finish off the green. I finished my weaving and you'll notice I went from the oranges again to the variegations, the blues and so on. And again, I brought the orange back out. I brought the green back out, this beautiful blue and the double one here. You'll notice how my colors have repeated in circles, which makes it really very beautiful. Again, you'll see that the outside has been covered and we're going to add fringe. And to do fringe, I've made several cuts of the different kinds of yarn that I have used. And I've decided to use the variegated here and here and this lovely rust and green, and we're going to make fringe. To make fringe, it's very, very simple. Let's take one strand like this, and we are going to take it and loop it like this. 
I'm going to bring it underneath like so with my loop and I'm going to pull it through my fringe. Try it again. Take this, run it through the edge, leave the loop and tie it like so. Our fringe is all done and look how gorgeous this weaving turned out. Here we have another wire circle that's been joined with masking tape just like we did with the circle weaving. This time however we are going to make an Indian dream catcher. To do that we're going to take our circle, we're going to tie a piece of yarn. You can use any color you wish. I think probably using a color from nature such as yellows or greens or blues or browns might be great. We're going to start with this sort of a maize yellow and we're going to do the same thing we did with the other wire. We are going to wrap this wire with yarn. You can see that I've completed the maize yellow yarn that covers the wire and it looks beautiful. We're going to use the same color of yarn and I'm going to cut several strands of yarn to make the web. Dream catchers had a purpose. They were to be hung above the bed and at night it was supposed to catch all the bad dreams so that everyone could sleep well. So to do that we're going to create a web. We'll start right here and again I will make knots to hold it into place. Tie it really tightly and make about three knots. Then we'll come across, but instead of going straight across, I'm going to come across here like this. Again, pulling it to make a loop. Let me show you how that works. Make a loop this way. Take your yarn underneath it and pull so it's nice and tight. Again, a loop and pull it through. And once again, a loop and pull the edges through like this. We'll take another piece, tie it here, and we're just going to make it a random web that will catch any bad dreams that might come your way. Probably use anywhere from seven to ten pieces of yarn to create that web. It doesn't have to be really full of lines, but you want it to have a feeling of, of a web itself. Pull again tightly, make the loop, and pull through. Doesn't this look great? We want to be able to hang it and I also want to add some fringe that hangs down that gives it a really good look. So we'll lay this here and we will cut some string. You can use varying lengths if you want. You want some longer, some shorter. And we're going to create fringe and we're going to use fringe just like we did on the circled ones. Double the yarn in the middle, run the loop up through here, hold it up, take these two threads through and pull it down. Oh, this is a really cool color. I like this shiny one. You can see some of the pony beads come in really shiny colors, some in dull, some are clear. So you can buy them different ways and it's, it's fun to try different things. You can buy variety packs too, they're relatively inexpensive and you can do a lot of neat things with these beads. Of course make jewelry and then of course you can use them like this to decorate some of your really neat yarn projects, your fiber projects. Well, I just finished up the dream catcher. The web here is nicely done so it will catch all those bad dreams. And the loop on top is going to make it very easy for hanging. You notice the fringe at the bottom has these beautiful beads, which gives it a really terrific look. A dream catcher. They're not hard and they're beautiful. Most fiber projects involve weaving of some sort. We've done a circular weaving and this is a flat weaving You'll notice all the beautiful colors and textures that I've woven in here and these were both done on a piece of cardboard. 
In this instance, the cardboard is sort of like the loom. A loom is a tool that has yarn stretched on it to create a weft. And on that, you will weave yarn over and under to create this beautiful surface. If you, this is a commercial one that already has the cuts on it. If you wish, you can make your own. This is a small piece of cardboard. I made the slits in here and I started wrapping the yarn and it goes around on both sides, creating a weft and I will weave with a warp over and under to create this design. I'm going to take a length of yellow, ooh, about 20 to 24 inches long, make a cut. This time we're going to use a tapestry needle, but we're going to use one of the plastic ones. It's longer. What's nice too is it's flexible. On the round weaving that we did, we didn't need the flexibility, but here we will. This also has a larger eye, so it's easy to get through. Now there's two different ways of doing this. You can start like this and weave over. I find the best way is to start it by putting a tie, just tying it onto the edge like this. I'll take a knot, make one knot like this, and then I have it anchored at the bottom. I'll trim this later. We are going to take this and we are going to go over, under again, all the way across. And we're going to pull this first one through. We don't want to pull it too tightly. If we do, we lose the shape. Now we're going to go back the opposite direction. So where we were over before, we're going to go under. We'll pull the line through and push it down next to each other like so. And then we just continue the process. You will see right now that that red thread is showing through. That will somewhat disappear as we go and push the threads closer together. I've used seven different rows here and notice by pushing it close together, the weft that we've created here, the weft that we've created has sort of disappeared. The red that you see here is going to be red fringe at the end, which will be great. We're going to have some fun now. We're going to go to this silly, fun thread that you have here. You can find these in yarn stores and it has all these cool threads that hang out and they make wonderful textures. So we're going to use that. Because it's such a thin yarn, I'm going to double it. So I'm going to take the two ends together like this and I have one long piece like this. I'm going to put it over my finger like we showed you and push it through the eye of the needle right here. Then we're going to start back through with our really interesting black fun yarn and it's going to pull through. And you can see that weaving is not something that you can do quickly. It can be time consuming depending on how much detail you want to put in. You don't have to go the whole length with the color. You can stop in an area and then have another area pick it up with another color. So it doesn't have to be a full stripe all the way across. I'm stopping my white here and I'll have another color come up through here. It just makes your weaving look a little more interesting. Look at this weaving that I did. I have a specific design in here. I put in a tree with the trunk, grass, and the sky. I've left this area here because I want to finish it off and show you how we can do that. My sky meets the ground here. So what I'm going to do is take the little blue here. I'm going to tie it off here and I'm going to make the knot really tight so it doesn't slip. And I'll trim it. And you will see that this is over under. So I'm going to do under over the exact opposite. I'm going to come up to the edge of this here and pick it up and pull it through. Then I'm going to come back the opposite way and then just keep this process up. Again, I'll pick up the thread where the tree trunk was and go into it and bring it back. It's a little tricky at first when you first start that, but 
it works really well. You go in as tight as you can. I think I'll go back one more time and we should be finished. Now, what I'm going to do now, I don't want any knots in this last part, so I'm going to do this. I am going to take this blue, go down to the back like this, and then I'm ju just going to run the blue through here like this on the back, make a little knot, and pull it down. And then I'm going to trim it. Now we have our tree design. I'm going to take the scissors right along the middle and I'm going to cut the threads. These threads fall down and you can see where our fringe is going to be. I'm going to take two threads at a time like this and I'm going to tie them together in a knot. This will prevent the weaving from coming undone. So now you can see we have the fringe at the bottom. And let's start on the top. You can pull several threads out at once. I'm going to show you you can do this if you wish. If you choose to do it this way, you can. So I'll take several threads at a time. I'll take the first two at the end tie the knots and the last one will be one single strand. So when you see this, we're all done. You'll notice that this one curves in. That happened because I pulled this really tight to get a good weave and that's kind of interesting. It gives it a very long feeling because it is a big old tall tree. The size and the shape of the cardboard will determine the size and shape of your final weaving. This is a perfect example of Indian basketry that was done with a plant fiber, a raffia. Notice how different colors have been integrated with different symbols. This is from New Mexico. Notice how it begins in a circle and radiates out. We are going to be making a fiber basket and it's going to use the same basic principle. We're going to start with our baskets now and I want to talk to you about the rope. This is a craft rope. It's sort of a paper-like substance that's been covered with a thread. You'll notice when you cut it you can get a nice clean edge. This is a half inch rope. You can buy it in half, quarter, and one eighth inch ropes to do a finer basket. Now this is a regular clothesline rope. It is cotton and nylon. You notice that I have a tape at the end of it and I'm going to show you why. If you were to take this rope and cut it, look how it pops open and makes a ragged edge. So what I always do is take my tape and I wrap it around like this really nice and tightly this way. And when I go to make a cut for my baskets I always cut it at an angle like this so I can add another rope right to it and it sort of joins together to get a nice clean edge. We're going to take the end of the yarn like this, laying it against the rope this way. I'm going to start here and wrap over the yarn to hold it in place like so. Going back over it to the edge this way. I'm now going to curve the yarn in like this and with the end of the yarn, I'm going to go around it a couple of times to hold it in place. Holding it there, I'm going to come back with the needle, go down through the center, and sew in my first stitch. Then I will take this again and wrap a little more out through here. Wrap it five or six times or more, like this. Roll it a little bit more taking the needle down through and that will hold it in place again. In the beginning we have to do this circle to get started. So it's a matter of coiling it in the middle 
and holding it in place with the needle with a few stitches. So we'll do a couple of these like this. We're going to take the yarn, wrap it around five or six times, tuck it in, come through again the middle, and then this time we're going to kind of come over the top and hold it into place like this. You can see we've begun the circle. Wrap a few more times. I love the variegated yarn because you get all these really neat changes of color without having to add different colors. And these make great baskets, as you saw in the examples that I made. Take this, go down through here like this, and make another stitch. And we keep the coil going. You notice that when I cut the yarn, I cut in the middle of the green. So when I go to add more yarn, I can take that end of green, which will match right here. I can add a knot. Make sure you give it a couple of turns here like this. And these knots, again, we can trim, but they also can tuck in really nicely. In the beginning, this looks very tedious, and it can be. And also, see, I'm just catching the edge of this one before, and this makes it strong. You have to make it strong in the beginning for the whole thing to work. And it seems very tedious in the beginning, but once you get started, it does go relatively quickly. You notice this piece of rope that I'm using has a bit of an angled cut, and so does this one. The reason is we want to add it like this so it has a nice joint. If we did it straight on, it might fall apart, but by cutting an angle this way and this way, it's going to have a nicer joint, and you won't see a big bump when we add it. So we'll take this, add it like this. I'm going to put my tape on at an angle. I'm now wrapping right over that tape joint that we have, and you see it's nice and strong. And I have this little knot, which I'm going to just tuck in here like this. And then I'm going to raise it up, take a stitch down through like this. And you see I'm building the second tier on top. You'll notice now, after taking this stitch, that I'm beginning to get three tiers high, and I can go straight up. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this like this, and I'm going to make the basket flare out again. So I'm going to, instead of having it straight up in the air, I'm going to have it at a little bit of an angle. So if you can see this, instead of going straight up, I'm going to let this just rest a little bit like this at an angle and my basket then is going to take a different shape. So instead of going straight up and down, it's now going to flare out a little bit. And we're making this nice and strong, and I'm making my basket wider by simply laying the rope out to the edge. It's like a coil pot in clay. It's the same technique. When you stack the coil pots, if you stack them on top of each other, you get a straight edge. If you stack them at an angle, you'll get that angle out. As I finish up the basket, I want to show you how each layer of rope that's been coiled and wrapped has gone up at an angle to create this basket that we're doing here. I'm right at the end, and I'm going to stop with this because I really like the height of it. Now, I could continue on, and if you want to make a really smooth, smooth top, you can layer your rope any way you want, stop at any time you want. I really like the look of this basket, so we're gonna stop right here. I'm going to make a knot at the end with my yarn going down through here, and we are finished. A beautiful coiled basket. With a variegated yarn, it looks really nice. Wasn't that fun? So many terrific things you can make from simple, simple materials. So use your imagination, gather your materials, and get started. 
you can be the artist that creates wonderful things from simple fibers. Thank you.